Our problem is we just need to live a lot longer, don't we? Uh, if you did have a craft at your disposal and they picked you up, you might want to go visit some of the other planets. Uh, here, Billy took a picture out the window. Right here is the top of a disc right in front of him. And there's another one up here. There was three craft. They took him to Venus, let him take a few pictures. They took him up to Mars, let him see that. They took him up to Jupiter, let him see the red spot and brought him back. It took two hours and 35 minutes for the trip. Here's another picture out the window. This is a blow up. Uh, when the pictures were being taken back, and most of these were shot in 75 and 76, by the way, uh, the pictures, the agencies, the CIA, and most of the intelligence community were very fascinated by this when it was going on. This is actually a computer blow up. It's a process picture. It's been digitized back in the 70s by a CIA office in Zurich, Switzerland. They were trying to understand the propulsion systems or learn something about them from these things. And this was one of the pictures they chose. Billy really didn't get that close to the ship. It's just been enlarged and filled in. But it makes a very dramatic looking picture. Uh, for those of you who might be slightly scientifically oriented, let me give you a crash course. See this bar right here? This is a very important factor in how what makes this ship work. This craft basically doesn't produce what we would call anti-gravity. Uh, all matter is comprised of atoms. Follow me on this. It has electrons and protons. We have electrons spinning around a nucleus, right? So the concept is that anywhere you would go in our atmosphere or in the universe, anywhere you go, there are atoms or subatomic particles that have electrons. Well, as long as you've got electrons around, one of these things will work. This device actually is designed so it will swim within electrons. That's what it's doing. Here's what happens. Down at the bottom, right here in the center, we have a reactor for power. We have a rod that goes up to the center. And up here at the top, we shoot a charge, a very positive charge. And right above where this rim is right here, the whole top of this ship, the, the surface area of the craft, a positive charge is shot out. And what it does, it charges the electrons that are flowing around the top of the craft, and it makes a vacuum right over the top of the craft. That's what causes it to lift up off the ground. Because down in the bottom, out in this area down here, the charge is all different. There's a negative charge put out by the reactor down here. There are three capacitors on the bottom, 120 degrees apart. When the capacitors fire, a negative charge goes out the bottom, but the charge, the capacitors do not work if the craft is too close to the ground. The planet itself grounds out the charge of the capacitors. So they have to lift it off the ground before they can have the capacitors charged up. So that's the purpose of the vacuum at the top. And this right across here is an interesting kind of metal which separates the positive charge from the negative charge because the surface of the craft is highly charged by this intense field that's going on. So you have to separate the two. We have the charge at the top, slowly lifts the disc up off the ground, it gets up about 12 feet. The capacitors down at the bottom, there are three of them, they're in a triangle form down at the bottom, charged up. As soon as they kick in, the flow of electrons then moves down the side of the ship gets out to the edge, and electrons have a very peculiar nature, they will not turn a corner. And when electrons get out to the edge of the right out here, they accumulate. And this accumulation, as soon as the charge gets high enough and they accumulate to a certain point, a field goes all the way around the craft, and that's what you see glowing at night if you see a disc. When the field gets up to a certain frequency, voila, we've got propulsion. The ship is then isolated within its own gravitational or magnetic field, and at that point, basically, the bottom of the ship is chasing the top of the ship, which is in a vacuum, and you've got a way to move a craft around. Now, if you accelerate that with a tremendous energy force they have within the reactors inside, which, by the way, are no bigger than the size of a football, it's an implosion system with no radioactivity. You can put your hand on it while they work. They're very small. That creates a strong enough energy field that you can move around anywhere you want to go. Here we've got a regular sized ship and two little ones again. Those little remotes. This is a different kind of craft. Uh, it doesn't sit down on the ground. It floats. The bottom of the crafts are flat. Burns the ground up pretty good though. Now there's one at night. It wasn't a solid craft. It was just more of an energy field. Uh, Billy took several pictures of it. We have about 20 witnesses that also took pictures of this. It changed shape. Small objects came out of the large one, flew around the house. Uh, 
Billy tried to communicate with it. The communication was impossible. Later he was told that he had been paid a visit by a group of life forms, if you want to call it, from another world that do not exist in solid form. That there are many kinds of life in various shapes and forms, and some of them are non-physical. And the non-physical ones can move their essence or their energy field or whatever you want to call it to where they want to go. They get together in groups and kind of like jump to different places that they want to go to. Kind of like biolocating, I guess we might call it. And what you're looking at here is a picture then of, of a life form that exists in a non-physical form that biolocated to Earth for whatever reason, perhaps just curious about Billy. These are the last photo sessions taken in 1981. Uh, Billy's got them pretty trained by now to park by trees, as you can see, and known objects. He calls it the Italian wedding cake. The balls on top of it were experimental. They apparently have since uh, dropped that design and uh, no longer needed, but this is a matter displacement device. Uh, they first acquired the knowledge to transmit, or you might say teleport their crafts on their very large crafts first. And then they're downscaling the technology here to the little ones. There's also a movie film of this coming in and zipping around the tree that he shot at the same time. And here we are coming in around behind the house. How would you like this to come floating through your back window? You look out and... Here's coming down in front of the house. That's where Billy lives in Shmidruti. Like they say in Men in Black, some swamp gas reflected off of Venus, and you got to. Yeah. <laughs> well, as you can see, this is why this case has been about the most controversial in the UFO history, because with these kinds of things to look at and talk about, it gets everybody pretty charged up. And here they are leaving at night, taking off from the house. The film imbalance causes it to look gold. The craft is actually silver. Here you can see the bottom of it, what looks like some sort of crystalline objects down at the bottom with some little, some sort of etchings all around the circumference. Okay, we'll stop right there. Okay, we can have the lights back on now. Everybody kind of watch your eyes.